This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Now we're going to finish it together because the, the last bit is an element of technique. But is everybody happy where we're up to? Is that a happy face, Christina? All right, it's okay. All right. No, no, no. Uh, forget for the moment the odd figure. Clearly, any of us could have made mistakes, yeah? But you are clear what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do the last bit together, and then I'll ask you one final thing. Now, uh, the one bit that is, I appreciate technique, but I think it's something you should all have seen before, but if not, learn from this. Having prepared the summary table... It also wants the combined probability of each potential outcome. And then the expected value. So what's he asking? I think it should be clear what he's actually asking for. Um, we've agreed now that there are nine possible outcomes... What we need to know, what he's asking for, is what the probability is of each of them. What's the probability that, you know, the college doesn't change and the riding school goes to 90% and so on? Uh, what's the probability on its own, please, that there's no change in the college? Yeah, and you all found it. Equine College, no change. The probability is 0.2, or if you prefer, there's a 20% chance. Do we all agree? Of course you bloody agree, you can all read. <laughs> uh, and so, although a rule's a rule in a moment, we're effectively saying 20% of the time there'd be no change in the college. Uh, what about the riding school? What's the probability that the riding school will be 90% capacity? 10% from the table. The probability is 0.1 or 10%. Well, I need the probability that both will happen. And all we say is this, well, 20% of the time, the college wouldn't change, Okay. Well, that's 20% of the time. 10% of those occasions, the riding school would be 90%. And so, what percent of the time, or what probability, would both happen, please? 2%. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, that 2%, or in terms of, it doesn't matter how you write it, either 20% times 10%, or a 0.2 probability times a 0.1 probability, it's 2% or 0 0.02. Now, you're going to have to help me here. I don't want to go on for 20 minutes if it's obvious to every, any, everybody. If it's not clear to anybody, please shout. And I'll explain it in a different way. You're obviously happy with that, did sis? Yes. That bit on its own. Uh, you're obviously happy, Katerina, because you agreed. Paulius? Mm. Olga? Inga? And so, the rest of it then, since we all agree, is back again to speed and avoiding silly mistakes. Uh, will you check me? Uh, no change stays at 20%. So, 80% capacity point, uh, it, probability is 0.6. I think it's 0.12. Uh, and 70% capacity 0.3, I think is 0 0.06. Yeah, we're just multiplying. Uh, similarly, um, no, um, equine college fees decreasing is 60% or 0.6. And so again, multiply, so I get 0 0.06, 0 0.36, 0 0.18. Anybody checking? And finally... Fees down 20%, the probability is 0.2. Uh, again, multiplying 0 0.02, 0 0.12, 0 0.06. Alright? And we're almost there. Alright, you all said you were happy with that. There were two marks for that on its own. 
But the main thing, of course, is right back to the beginning, realising that there were nine possible outcomes. Otherwise you don't get any. Otherwise, well, not that you don't get any, no, no. <laughs> Hold on. The full table was five marks, but to get the table you need to work out those. Yeah. Uh, if I remember rightly, it was actually four marks for doing the workings there. All right? So you're not far short of the half marks for this bit. Uh, writing them up as a table was only one extra mark. Yeah. But of course, if you hadn't got the table, the probabilities become rather... You don't get much more. Okay? Uh, finally, for this bit... Oh, sorry, one thing. Uh, this is very minor, but even so. Uh, there's an obvious little check on yourself, if you've got the time. What must those probabilities add up to? Thank you. I'm not going to waste time here. Uh, that wasn't required, obviously, in the exam. But um, I think we should all be aware of it. Uh, finally, though, he said the table should also show the expected value. Well, two things here. Here, we've now done everything. Uh, and again, what a, although we're going to go through decision, risk and uncertainty properly shortly... I think everybody's had before that expected value is just effectively the average. You multiply by the probabilities and you add up. Now forgive me, I am not going to do that here. I'll give you a printed answer. But again, and that is just calculator speed. But are we all... Well, sorry, I, I'm going to deal with it anyway. But I think everybody should have been happy with that. What we mean by expected so value. <laughs> uh, well, uh, again, it is speed, yeah? So it's I said right from the beginning, marks. it's nine marks. It's taken me a long time to talk, but I'm not talking in the exam, yeah? But it is a rush, it's, I said before. So we need also to get this summary of, of, of the average. And to get the full marks for B part one, he wanted a table of all the profits, which is that. He wanted the combined probabilities, which was that. And he also says the table should also show the expected value. He wanted all three bits. But as, as I was saying, you, I hope you agree with me that still it's not arithmetically hard. I could have understood if some of you weren't happy about the probability bit, but all of you were. It's not arithmetically hard. What makes this a bastard? It's completely different from earlier exams. You know, you may have found a question at F5, F9 hard, because it's technically hard. What makes this hard? None of you can claim it's technically hard. It's the speed. You said yourself, you know, nine marks to do all of that. You've got to be quick. Coupled with, and the two conflict, obviously, uh, the reading. That's the danger. And I'm afraid that is practice. This is not an unusual question. So many times the same sort of thing presented in different ways, obviously. But it is not unusual. The chances of anything being technically hard in the compulsory section are tiny. It's speed and it's reading. And I'm not going to keep repeating it, but I, ca I really can't say that enough. And the only way you can get that, the only way, I can't, I can talk all day, but I can't teach speed and reading, you know. The only way is by practice. And just getting used to the level of the arithmetic and the style of the question. Okay. Um, did this, you said quite rightly about the time on it. Use a bit of sense, you know, obviously if you are running out of time. Uh, to actually calculate the expected value itself is only half a mark. I've proved I know what, what I'm doing, you know. Uh, because again, another fatal problem. Um, it's clear for a lot of people that take, the whole parts A and B1 take ages. The fatal problem is obviously uh, overrunning on your time and because you've taken too long not doing parts two and three which is nine marks and even worse of course 
um, not having enough time for the rest of the exam. Yeah? Be prepared for it. If it means leaving bits out, leave bits out. Hello? I'm not being silly. But it's, going, it's needed in this exam. You know, uh, even doing half the table and without working out the final figure, I've proved I know what I'm doing for each bit and I'll easily get half the marks. If it's taking too long, it's better to do that rather than leave two and three. Okay? And just look at two and three. Just look at them. If you read his comments, loads of people didn't do two and three. And it's understandable. Why? Because they were still messing around. Well, some people were still messing around with part A. Mm -hmm. uh, more likely messing around with part B. But, you know, if you got lost on part B, you got lost on it. But the minute you realise you don't know what's happening or you get stuck or it's taking too long, look at B part two. It's only three marks, I know. But comment on the use of expected values. All right, we are going to cover it later. It's an element in a sense of learning. But there's one obvious comment which everybody should be able to make. Comment on the use of the, by the management. There's one big problem with expected values. I'm inventing a figure here. I'll give you a printed answer. But suppose I were to say the expected value was three million. I invented it. Don't copy it down. What would be the huge and I hope obvious problem if um, EMA or whatever they called used that expected three million for any decision making? Say again. Uh, one problem with expected values, yes, is of course these probabilities inevitably are estimates. If any of those probabilities are wrong, so too would be your expected value. You agree? There's an even more bigger problem. Suppose the answer was three million. What would be the danger, what's the problem, if EMA made any decisions based on that average of three million? Just never going to happen. Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> that uh, it won't be three million. In that, the college, it'll be one of those three things next year. The riding school will be one of those three next year. It's not going to keep changing day by day, you know? If it was changing day by day, fine. Work out the average. But it isn't. The profit will be one of those nine figures. It may end up being a lot higher, it may end up being a lot lower, but it's not going to be three million or whatever the average is. You agree? Now again, you should all have heard that before because that's been relevant in lots of earlier exams, but where the idea happened, I mean, three marks. You know, even just to write anything intelligent gets a mark always. Uh, but finally, look at number three. Last thing, number three. It may only be six marks, but six out of 25 is what? It's more than 25%. Even if you'd not been able to do any of the numbers, which I think would be appalling, I can understand you getting out of time or stuck on B1, but not otherwise. But even if you'd done no numbers at all, by now you've read it, suggest three reasons why the government of Heartland might have decided to open an academy comprising an equine college and a riding school. Would anybody like to suggest one reason? Accessibility for everyone. Hold on, one thing at a time. Accessibility for everyone. Um, yes, why not? Yes, particularly because I think you should expand slightly. Um, when you look back to the previous page, the college certainly has a maximum capacity of 1,200. It's the only equine college 
And we're operating at full capacity. 1,200 students were attending. Yeah? Well, we don't know, but that suggests uh, that we could be turning people away, you know? Uh, and therefore, the government stepped in. Uh, they're opening. You know, we, sorry, I'm expanding what you said, but that was what you were getting at. Uh, that's less relevant, I think, to the riding school, obviously. We're not operating at full capacity anyway. But certainly, that could be a reason for the Equine College bit. Anything else? Sorry, Olga, I shut you up. Then the what, sorry? Oh, be careful there. Remember, we're a private business. Uh, they're asking us why the government has decided to open the school. Okay, now I quite agree, sorry, and if that's what you're saying, Olga, I quite agree, except it needs more than that. And the clues actually are in the question. Um, and no more can participate if it's cheaper, fine. But why should the government want to do that? Elections, Elections are coming. <laughs> uh, but even then, although I think that's going a bit far for the exam, why should that gain them votes? Yes, look back at, oh sorry, two bits. Yes, look back at the top of page five. Just read that carefully. He's given you the answer. Some time ago, the government of Heartland, which actively promotes environmental activity, initiatives. I mean, that's been completely irrelevant for the numbers. He doesn't waste his time. Um, giving you all sorts of exciting information that's irrelevant. This government is environmental. Uh, look back at the previous page, the first paragraph on, uh, the, of the question. The first paragraph of the question on the previous page. Yeah? Most people ignore it. They think, oh, it's just setting the scene. The Equine Management was founded in 1990, privately owned organisation in Heartland. A developing country which has a large agricultural sector. Much transportation is provided by horses. Well, he didn't need to have told you that. You know, he needs to tell you we have a college, he needs to tell you we have a riding school, that's fine. But why has he wasted time saying they have a large agricultural sector much transportation is by horses and, as we read a minute ago, they're promoting environmental uh, initiatives. That's why they're opening this college and riding school. They need people. The much transportation is by horses, you know. That's why people might vote for it. <laughs> yeah? We're an agriculture economy. They use horses. They want to keep environmental. So they want the population... Uh, to know about horse surgery or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and to know how to ride a horse. Alright? Mm -hmm. That's why they've done it. Okay? So, you could, obviously, you get credit for anything sensible. But the clues were there. And again, that's not unusual. I picked this one deliberately. It was a brilliant example of what he's always doing. Provided you read and look for the clues, B part 3 was actually a very, very easy six marks. But most people won't have got it, either because they never got there. The numbers obviously take time. But six marks is a lot out of 25. I'd rather have left half the table out, quite frankly. They either never got there, or they got some credit for being sensible, but... They'd not read it, they missed the point, yeah? Uh, what a lot of people actually wrote, apparently, um, is, you know, I said that bits of P3, don't be frightened of using P3 knowledge, but they wrote about, um, oh, they want to diversify and things. 
and they completely misunderstood. They read the question as being, why does EMA have a riding school and a college, you know? If that had been the question, all right, diversification is an element of it. But it was specifically the government, and the government's not interested in diversification or anything, you know, <laughs> but you understand me. People rushed in, hadn't read it properly, and wrote what may have been beautifully sensible for a different question. Oops, irrelevant for this one. Okay? <laughs>